Welcome back. In the previous video of the Employee Leave Manager Excel template, we actually saw how we can set up all the settings in the settings sheet. In this video, we will learn how to enter the employee data into this template. In the employee sheet, we can start typing and adding the list of employees in our organization. First, it's important to know that this is an Excel table, so you should definitely start adding the data first at cell A4, which is where the table begins. And so make sure that you start from A4, cell A4. So I can type in, let's say, employee one, hit tab, and you saw what happened when the color of the cell changed from the light red to a gray. The light red indicates that there is a data entry error. There are three possible data entry errors that are being tracked and checked for, and so those are listed here. The first thing is the employee name and the start date. Both are required fields. We need that information so that the template can calculate the necessary information or the reporting for that employee. So every record should have an employee name and the date when the employee started at the organization, or in other words, the start date or the hire date. So I'm going to type in, let's say, January 15, 2019, hit enter. And now you saw that the red color background fill changed. So we are good to go. So now we can move on to the next step. The end date is the date when the employee has left the company. So if the employee is still employed with the company, then you do not have to put anything in the end date column. So now that we have entered the first employee name and the date, let's try entering the second employee. So in order to enter the second employee, you cannot do it anywhere else. You have to make sure that you go to cell A5, which is the immediately following row and then type in employee two or the name of the second employee and hit enter. And now you see that the table expanded. This is very important. If you don't enter the data inside the table, they will not be accounted in the reporting. So make sure that you enter inside the table. How do we know enter that we have entered inside the table is if you click on that cell that you've entered, you should see a table design ribbon pop up at the top right here. That means it's inside the table. If I click on a cell here, like A6, for example, it's actually not inside the table. So make sure that the data you entered, after you entered, check if actually it's been there. This is only if you're very new to Excel and Excel tables. If you're familiar with it, obviously you know how to use it. Uh, and this thick line here indicates the end of the table. So that's another way to make sure that you can see the whether the data is entered inside the table or not. To add new records, always go to the row that is following the end of the table, type in, it will automatically get expanded um, by Excel. Now, the start date, once we enter the start date here, let's say I enter something like this, then that's not red anymore, so we are good. The second important validation we do is the employee name should be unique. We cannot have two employees with the same name. That's kind of the require, um, a condition or the restriction within this template because we use the employee name to pull up reports and dashboards. It is important that it's unique. Um, if you have somewhat similar um, names in the employee, so I would recommend making a small change um, in just for recording purposes here, you can put in in parentheses something different so that the two names don't seem like uh, duplicate copy. So for example, if I have two employees with name employee one, you see that it became red. That means there is an error. So when I do two, it's no longer an error. Again, if you have any suggestions or questions on this, please post them in the comments. And the last check we do is the employee end date cannot be before the start date. So let's say this employee um, the, left the company, but we cannot have this, for example, one 5 2018 so this cannot be true because the employee started in june cannot end in january of that year so that's that's what the uh, the last validation here means now now that we have talked about how the required fields can be entered i also want to talk about how you can 
add more columns to this table to store any information you need. For example, you, um, I've already given a few as a hint here, department, manager name and location might be more commonly used, but you can also rename this and say, okay, I want to store this like contact information or email or some notes or something that you want to track for each employee. You can just rename them and keep adding them um, to the right. And you can you can also move this box if this is on in your way. But you can add more columns by just typing in next to the column header here. I can type in a new column name, hit enter. And now I've actually added a new column. You can change the formatting or the color of this column header. But essentially, you can add more columns to store whatever information you would like to about the employee. Now, finally, to wrap up this video, I'm going to show how you can copy paste your data from another sheet over here. If you have already um, stored all this in a spreadsheet, you don't want to retype everything, you can copy and paste. And I'm going to use uh, another version of the template where I've actually you know, entered a lot of names or data. So if you have something like this in a different spreadsheet, make sure that you have it in the same order, meaning the column order that I have here in this file should be the same as the column order that I have we have in our template. If not, make sure that you organize your source data first before you try this. But the steps are select the data, copy, go here, go to cell A4, this is very important, right click, do paste special, do value. So this is very important. If you don't do this, you might be copying over formatting formulas and other things from the other sheet, other sheet that you are copying from. We don't want that. So make sure you choose paste values only. And now, you will see that all the data gets copied over to our template. Now you have completed migrating all your employee data into our template. We are almost there finishing up the data entry. In the next video, we will talk about how to enter the leave data in this template. And then we will move on to the, the four reports and dashboards that are fully automated, available for us to get insightful reporting about the leave management data in our organization. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments. I will do my best to respond as quickly as possible. Thank you very much for watching.